There's so much action in the NBL tonight, we couldn't just pick one game for you guys, so we went with two. Our very own Megan Stamper stopped at Crooksville tonight for their matchup against Tri-Valley, and then she headed to Maysville for their game versus Vi Philo. And Megan, let's start off with the Ceramics and the Scotties. And dominate. I expected them to come out and dominate, and that is exactly what they did. However, I was a little shocked with the lopsided outcome over in Maysville. But first, let's talk about that Scotty domination. The Ceramics knew that they were going to have to pull some tricks out of their hat early on to knock Tri Valley off their game, and they did just that, going for the onside kick on the first kickoff of the game. They were able to recover. They were able to recover, but they weren't able to get anything going on that drive. Um, and Tri Valley, Tri Valley was. Um, Tri Valley was without starting quarterback Andrew Newsom tonight because he was out with a shoulder injury, and, but it doesn't seem like it'll be anything that'll keep him out long. Bryce Farmer took over the quarterback duties tonight and did just fine. I mean, they won 43 to 14. A, a big win from the Scotties. How were they able to contain the ceramics tonight? Uh, Danny, the ceramics had their chances to get something going, but they had trouble holding on to the ball. Drop catches by receivers and missed interceptions on defense really came back to haunt Crooksville in the end. So Tri-Valley off to a 3-0 start. Now let's switch gears over to Maysville. We thought this would be a tighter game than it was, so what happened out there for the Panthers? Well, you know, last week Maysville's defense came to play and they held New Lexington to just seven points. But, but this week was a different story, giving up 27 points to the Electrics, who walked away with a 27-7 win. You know, granted the Philo offense is much more dynamic than New Lexington, I still expected a closer game. Maysville fell in a hole early, trailing 21-0 in the first half. Evan Brown did have an eight-yard rush um, for a touchdown in the second quarter, but that was all the offense they would be able to muster. Uh, this was the first time in four years the Electrics were able, able to defeat Maysville as well. Yeah, that's the first win in four years against a conference rival. That's a big step for Philo. So what's the difference this time around for the Electrics? Not only in this game, but for the rest of the season is their experience. Quarterback Nate Baker, running back Dakota Perry, and wide receiver Jacob Muller lead this offense. Behind an experienced offensive line, this offense, this offense has been able to um, average 31 points per game this season. Well, great work, Megan. We